Well, hello again and welcome to part one of my first European trip through Europe for some time and also my first trip through Europe on a mid-size scooter, so the Honda ADV 350. So in this video I'll be leaving the northeast of England and heading over towards the ferry in Newcastle then I'll be heading over to Amsterdam and then heading through the Netherlands and Belgium and I'll be heading for a place ultimately called Reboville. Uh, Reboville is absolutely gorgeous, it's covered in vineyards and forests and bendy roads and castles and all sorts of good things and it's also stuffed to the girls with fabulous food like flam couche and munster cheese and biscuits and new and lots of sausages. I don't eat sausages but there's lots of sausages and obviously lots of really nice things to drink like Riesling and other white wines like Gewürztraminer and obviously lots of beer and stuff. And I should also add that this video doesn't feature any dramas, any crises and it's certainly not a motorcycle adventure video. So without further ado let's crack on down the A1 and head towards Newcastle and as with all good holidays it starts on a <laughs> Okay, so it's day one of the trip over to Europe on the ADV 350, so successfully negotiated the A1, you know, all of 60 miles, 65 miles from Berwick upon Tweed. So we're now on board, so we've got about 45 minutes before we leave the port. So I'm going to leg up to the top of the, one of the decks and uh, we'll have a look at a few shots of North Shields and South Shields as it glides by. As you can see, this is a luxurious cabin. I'm not going to show you around because uh, I don't think you want to see my toilet, do you really, to be honest. Anyway, but very excited. As I said, very uneventful so far. The ADV is safely nestled away like a little baby porpoise in the belly of this huge ship. Uh, what else? Anything else? Um, well, I did come across a German lady who, unfortunately, as she was coming into the car park at the ferry terminal, she did drop her bike, so I did go over and help her up with it. Right, I'm going to uh, have a look upstairs, see what's going on, maybe grab a beer. There'll be some footage of us leaving the port. And I'll see you later. Right, so that's day one over with. Um, I've played some bingo, I've watched a bit of cabaret, I've had a beer and uh, I've had something to eat so I'm going to bed now. Kind of feel quite tired and emotional. Right, so I will see you in the morning. Oh, God, sorry, day two, uh, I've been dreaming about bees again. Anyway, so it's the morning of day two, uh, it's about five o'clock in the morning and we're just about to steam into Amsterdam. Right, more later. Okay, so it's day two of the ADV Euro trip and it's the 10th of September and it's around 6.30 in the evening as I record this. So today was probably the, well, it was the first big riding day. So I headed down from the port of Amsterdam, so Ijmuiden uh, to here, which is Chimay in Belgium, which is around 210 miles. I mean, it's not a massive, di uh, it's not a massive distance by any stretch of the imagination. But I tell you what, it seemed to take forever. I mean, the weather was absolutely shocking. It wasn't that warm. It was about 15 degrees. It was like raining a little bit. But worst of all, there was like 50, 60 mile an hour winds all the time. And I don't know what it is about Dutch motorways. They were absolutely rammed. They're also a bit very, very boring. Now, I used to think the M5 was the most boring motorway, but I'll tell you what, the motorway down to Rotterdam, my God, that's tedious. And all you can see either side of the road is, well, A, flatness, and then chemical factories, oil refineries, or container parks. So there's not much to look at. But anyway, once I got south of Brussels, everything was great, sort of whizzing around, you know, um, those nice northern French, Belgian roads. So that was really nice. And now I'm here in this fabulous apartment, so everything is good. So the plan at the moment is I'm going to head out into town and uh, get a drink and get something to eat. So obviously a glass of Chimay. And then tomorrow I'm going to go and visit the Chimay road racing circuit. And my intention is to break the lap record on a scooter, which shouldn't be too hard because I don't think there is a lap record. So I'll be the first. So if it takes me one hour, 57 minutes, then that's, that'll be absolutely fine. Other than that, the ADV has been absolutely 
fabulous and I'm getting around an average of around 75 miles to the gallon at the moment which is brilliant it's comfortable it's great it's not being overwhelmed on the motorway and everything is brilliant and I can't wait for tomorrow right I'm going off for a beer I've got my clothes peg so I'll see you later So here we are, the Chimay racing circuit, and I've just turned up for scrutineering. There's no one here. Blimey. That's a shame. Oh well. Sure I'll get over it. So it's day three, Wednesday the 11th. Um, I'm still in Chimay, and I tell you what, the weather last night was absolutely horrific. It hooned it down. Really, really heavy rain, but luckily the roads have now dried. So uh, you can see I'm here at the Circuit de Chimay. So they started racing here in 1926, I think it was, and then 20, 30 years later, I think they stopped because it was a little bit dangerous. And at that time it was a 10 mile road circuit. And I think it had quite high speeds. And as you can probably see, the main straight is really quite something. So what I'm gonna do now is jump on the ADV 350 and I'm gonna do a lap and break the lap record for scooters, which shouldn't be too hard because I don't think there is one. So that's what I'm going to do now. So if you're, if you're passing this way, you know, it's it's worth worth a visit. I mean, I won't make a special visit for it, but it's a nice place and it's kind of evocative of old racing past. And if you look on the floor, you can see the drips of old two strokes and BSAs. Now, how cool is that? Right, I'm going to do my lap now. And now I'm just going to go and have a little ride around the Ardennes and bits of Wallonia and I'm going to head over to the Meuse River, I think, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Thomas will probably correct me. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to head over to the Meuse River that kind of like flows up through and towards Luxembourg and stuff, I think, does it? Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of riding today. Uh, it's not that warm and I'm kind of getting prepared for heading into Switzerland because the weather is still really unseasonable. So the last time I checked the weather app, i.e. like about three seconds ago, Grindelwald, where I'm going, is showing about two degrees and snow. So I don't know what's happened. And you know what's really annoying? The week after, so the week I get back, it's the perfect alpine weather of 17, 18 degrees and clear blue skies. But I'll tell you what, the ADV 350 was brilliant coming here. Yeah, it was absolutely great. Really good. Really enjoying it. Right, see you later. God blimey, looks like good weather today. So it's day four. I'm currently in Chimay, but I'm just about to leave. So I'm heading over to the Alsace today, Ribeauville, which I'm really looking forward to. Really nice half timbered town and some really great twisty roads and castles and all that kind of good stuff. So it's around 250 miles. At the moment, it's around 7.30 in the morning, uh, Belgian time, European time. So half six back at home. I'm gonna make a quick, I'm gonna make a start very, very soon. I think it's going to probably take me, I'm going to, well, I'm going to give it all day, really, to be honest, because I'm not going to rush. But no, I've had a good time in Belgium, actually. Chimay, I probably wouldn't stay here again. I mean, it's nice enough, but it's um, probably a little bit too small to keep you occupied, you know, when it's chucking it down, which it has been quite a lot, to be honest. But no, it's nice enough. But what's really good about it is it's really close to some really nice roads and some great things to see. So like Dynant, which I went to visit yesterday, and then following the River News. So really, really nice. So I'm just going to finish my packing now and then get cracking on the ADV which is all pretty much loaded up and ready to go outside the window and I'll see you later. Right okay so I've just turned up in Ribeauville in the Alsace in France so I did park up before and went to discover where my B&B was and get the key so I'm just off riding the ADV through the Grand Rue in Ribeauville um, over to the B&B. As you can see it's probably a bit of a, it's a bit of a labyrinth, little old medieval village, lots of twists and turns and stuff. So I'm just going to turn into the B&B now. So I'm staying at a place called the Mirabelle B&B and it's an absolute cracker and just wait, just wait until you see what the garaging situation is like, which you know if you're visiting um, a place abroad and you've got expensive bikes and stuff, I mean you want a nice garage don't you? I mean check this out and you get a little key fob and everything highly recommended and on arrival at the Mirabelle the hosts are absolutely great and you do get offered a glass of local wine I mean what could be better anyway while I'm in this neck of the woods 
just a big hello to Thomas Reuter, who's a long-term follower of the channel for some reason. So Thomas lives a bit further north over in Germany, and he's uh, in the Moselle Valley. Now, we were going to meet up. I was going to, you know, cross over into the border of Germany and say hello to Thomas, and he was going to ply me with good food and drink. Um, but we've just learned today that the, the German government have closed our borders, closed the borders to all Mancunians, which I don't know whether that's anything to do with the OA to, to do with the Oasis reunion, but you know, you can't blame them really, can you? To be honest, our kid. Anyway, so I'm really looking forward to exploring Riboville in a little bit more detail. And here's a few, hopefully there's some nice shots here of what the town is like to give you an idea of it. So yeah, half timbered, gorgeous loveliness surrounded by vineyards and forests and just full of good food and nice things to eat and drink and things to do. It's quite touristy and stuff, but you know, sometimes that's a good thing, I think, you know, when you're visiting a place for the first time. So really looking forward to getting out, having a beer, having a flan couche, scoping a load of monster cheese and, and uh, just generally relaxing and enjoying myself. Um, what else? So yeah, the journey here, again, was really cold. I think that's going to be a common refrain. And it's being punctuated by some very, very heavy showers. But on the plus side, I haven't yet had to wear my waterproof trousers because the ADV just sort of breaks up enough of it. And the fact that I'm wearing leather jeans as well just means that I'm sort of showerproof, so mostly protected. So yeah, it's not been too bad. And I'm also using the Garmin XT. And I must admit, this well, this is my first time using any sort of GPS system you know i've always relied on paper maps and scribbled instructions and stuff and i must admit using a gps at the moment is a bit of a love-hate relationship i mean it's great for getting me out of a place and great for getting me into a place but in terms of me trying to you know kind of force it into submission and take me somewhere where i really want to go i don't know it just sort of seems to annoy me a bit and it seems to be a bit more difficult but i'm probably using it wrong Anyway, so hope you're enjoying the sh shots of Riboville at the moment. Highly recommended. Can't wait to have a little bit more of an explore. And then tomorrow I'll be going out for a bit of a ride, uh, visiting some of the nice twisty roads and stuff, and really looking forward to that. Okay, see you later. Okay, so that's the end of day five. And it's been a good day, so I've done some really nice wiggly waggly roads. It's been very, very cold though, so I went over a number of smaller passes here in the Vosges. National Park. So I went over, for example, the Col de la Schlucht, I think that's how it's pronounced, and it was like six degrees. And I also went to a really nice place um, that was recommended. It's got a really nice lake and really kind of, you know, craggy granite, rocky outcrops and mountains behind it. So I thought I'll go there and I'll take some great pictures and get some footage and stuff. But literally, I got off the scooter, took one of my gloves off, and it felt as though I dipped my hand in liquid nitrogen. My God! it was cold so as a result i haven't got that much footage or photographs to be honest because it's just been too cold to take any photographs and you know like work the camera still it's been a really good day um i don't know if you saw the post the community post that i did so i came across a german war grave now i don't tend to visit war graves you know um, i don't know if many people do but you know i wouldn't normally uh, seek them out but i did just come across this one and it was in such a beautiful setting i mean the sun was you know breaking out between the clouds and kind of shining through the trees and then illuminating the back of the crosses and there were just these amazing shadows and reflections it was really it was really quite a moving place and i thought the words that were on the memorial and the words by uh, jean-claude juncker the ex-prime minister of luxembourg i thought were really meaningful so it was a really it was a really good thoughtful and peaceful place just to stop Okay, so shortly after doing that little piece to camera, it did this in the Belgium. Yes, it absolutely tipped it down. But luckily, I missed it by about 20 minutes in terms of being on the bike, so all is good. Anyway, um, obviously, I'm going for another beer and something to eat now. So tomorrow, it's Saturday the 14th, and it's day six, I think. So I'm heading off into the frozen waste of Switzerland and heading over to Grindelwald. But really looking forward to it so in the next episode this is when it starts to get really interesting and really exciting i'll see you later